just do some small uh, user uh, interviewing sort of thing. Pro perhaps that may not qualify for high val validity uh, research, you know, maybe then you need to discuss the whole project and maybe that user, uh, uh, little bit of user research that you did could be just a component in it. Then you also do lot of uh, costly experiments, you know, which have external validity. Uh, for example, paper prototyping, non-functional non user interface prototypes, visualization of interaction. We always do that. We build a prototype. It is non-functional. So that has only external validity, you know, because the system actually is not functional. So you can perhaps only look at the way things are organized and seek feedback on it. So that has very partial external type of validity and true experiments is something very very important because they have internal validity so so maybe you have a functional prototype and you carry out user testing you have a final product or you or you have planned certain exper experiments in the real world wherein you actually conduct those experiments you have defined the conditions the kind of stimulus that you have chosen so these are true experiments so true exp experiments have internal validity so again based on these you know so this also helps you in assessing what is the uh, the, 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 the quality of paper that uh, is likely to come out because uh, your confidence level can also be based on that you know because finally when it goes for an international conference they would be more keen on experiments that have internal validity you know so it's really deep and everything is in real terms you know it's not something like real but it is real you know so generally the weightage and the confidence is higher so whereas if it is only an, an, an external kind of uh, 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 prototype then you have to rest on the novelty of the idea because it's not functional but the idea must be really novel it should really be uh, you know it should really uh, uh, burst the crackers whenever somebody reads it it should be that great idea so you need to know i mean where you fit and what what level what level of expectation is there so generally a typical project would move from this to this you also have pilot projects and pilot projects also make very good case study papers then the research techniques you know the type of techniques that you apply you know so literature study, prototyping, appreciative inquiry, okay, case study papers, uh, I mean case study, I mean studying a case, I mean uh, a, a, a banking project, something which somebody has implemented, you do a case study of how they, how they started, how they ended, what are the results, so that the, the same pitfalls or the mistakes could be avoided, structured interview, focus groups, question I ask, surveys, experimentation, experimentation is actually you you design experiments and have testing, trials in real conditions, ethnography, model based evaluation, heuristic reviews, analysis, interpretation and so on. So, so many techniques and while doing all these things, what is important is the meta level thinking. If we are not good at meta level thinking, you will realize that it will be very difficult to put a paper together. Meta level thinking is the, the ultimate thing that you gain while uh, when you write a paper what we mean by meta level thinking is if you look at the artisans you know you must have seen lot of artisans who who, uh, who make uh, uh, very good uh, handicrafts if you ask them can you tell me how you manage the process he will not be able to tell how he how he does it he says it's a traditional thing and we just do it and i can do it he, however you ask a project manager he will give you a process he will give and he will say these are the points which I need to manage. Uh, so process manage thing that that level of thinking is meta level thinking. So to be able to see the activities, you know, with an aerial view and developing some understanding about it. So paper essentially helps you in developing meta level thinking. Construction of hypothesis. Hypothesis is basically uh, when you look at these larger like if you see global warming is what it is a hypothesis. There are many people who say there is nothing happening like that, forget about it. What the carbon production that we do is, is negligible compared to the volume of atmosphere, the size of the earth, it is so huge that this is negligible. When you have doing all these things, what sort of papers are likely to come out? What are the broad types of papers that you have? You have empirical papers. So you have, I mean, apparatus, materials, observations, results answers to research questions these are the types of things we did this this was the stimulus and this is the kind of this is how users responded this, and this is how you classify the response and these are the broad understanding